Hello, this is Mike Lively, and today we're wrapping up Chapter 2 of Professional Paper Vision. And we're going to concentrate today on something called the Display Object 3D. As a matter of fact, that's going to lead us right into Chapter 3. We're going to learn all about that class, dig into the matrix method. So what is a display object? It actually is what makes all the magic happen in Paper Vision. Here's a kind of a five-point list. Let's go through it. The Display Object class represents an instance of 3D objects that are in the scene. So you know, when I'm clearing objects, I'm clearing that scene. They're all there. And everything, in a sense, is a display object. And that includes uh, objects in the scene, not only those that can be rendered, but also the camera and its target. So when you move that camera around, it, it is itself the display object. So you can see that's actually the core of paper vision. Three, the display object class supports basic functionality. It's got X, Y, position, rotation, scaling. So all those matrix 3D elements that you find now incorporated in the Flash 10 player, it has. And so we're going to learn all about the mathematics of that in Chapter 3. For the display object is not an abstract base class, therefore you can call the display object directly, invoking a new display object. So you can bring empty display objects on the stage and put other objects in them. And so many times people think of the display object as a, an empty movie clip that you stick things into. And as mentioned already, the display object, you know, has that matrix 3D element in it, and that's very important. And once again, we're going to cover that in great detail. So we have a number of examples we're going to look at. Uh, the first one is the orbit example, and we're going to talk about how that display object plays in there. And what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to take two cylinders. One's going to be a large cylinder and one's a small cylinder. So I'm rotating the small cylinder at a different rate than the large one. And I'm sticking, in a sense, the small cylinder into the large cylinder. So in a sense, it's a parent-child relationship. The small cylinder is the child of the large cylinder. And let's take a look at that example again. So we're actually running that example right now on the screen. And here it is. And so in a sense, display objects can be nested. So I've, actually what I've done, I've nested this small uh, object into this large object. Isn't that pretty cool? It's pretty fantastic. And once you get the idea of how display objects work, your work in paper vision and extending paper vision will become so much more easy. Okay, let's take a look at the next object that we're wrapping up with, the container pivot. This is a very interesting concept, and I've introduced this. You don't ever see this in paper vision anywhere. But uh, what I've done is created my own pivot. And if you come along here, let's go and run it. It's a very simple example. You won't go, no real wows about it. But we're in Adobe Flex right here. Let's go and run it. And all I'm doing is pivoting a sphere around a center. Uh, typically, the way this is done, you take a container, and then you put a sphere in it, and you move it to the side, and you pivot the container. But that's not what I'm doing. I'm actually taking the sphere itself, drawing it in a different position, and pivoting it around its center. So I actually went in and hacked the, the uh, sphere class. And so if you look right here, I have a, a new component that doesn't appear in paper vision. That's my pivot. So if I change that component there, that 400, for example, to 300 or 200, it'll move the position of the sphere. So I actually increment it, pivot itself. Pivot, it's so important. If you want to do some pretty uh, advanced stuff, you've got to get your ability to pivot down. And there's two ways to do it, to hack the sphere class like I did here, or to put thing, objects inside of other objects and move their positions and spin them around. So the display object, in a sense, is the best way, I think, to do a pivot. But I just wanted to show an alternate example. Let's look at the next uh, example. So that was a sphere pivot. And now let me talk about the container pivot. And that's what I'm saying. I'm putting one container in another and moving the container. And so let's just take a look at it. So let's run the container pivot example. This actually is a cute example. I, I think I really like it. Uh, it's very simple. And basically what's happening here is that you've taken this object, this little sphere, and you've thrown it into a container and you're rotating that container. But what you're also doing as you rotate the container that is you're oscillating that sphere back and forth in a linear line. So as it oscillates around, it looks like it's actually doing an orbit, a, kind, of a, kind of a superposition idea. And let me go ahead and get, get a line tool to show you what I mean here. So, so it's really just oscillating back and forth, but as it spins around in a circle, it looks like it's oscillating back and forth like that, kind of like the old uh, drawing uh, things we used to have when, as kids. And that's actually what it's doing. So there you have it. Kind of a cute example. And once again, an illustration of that whole idea of a, co a container and container or the use of the display object. My next example is what I call the multi-container pivot. And all I'm really showing in this uh, particular example is that the same thing we did with particle systems in Chapter 1 we can do in Chapter 2. So what I'm actually doing is just creating a particle system. I have this little update method that throws all the particles on the stage. 
And also all the particles are thrown on the stage. Then I begin in my loop, iterating all those particles and changing their positions. A nice little application, kind of the same idea as the pivot uh, uh, example we looked at before, where you have a single orbital kind of spinning around in a spiral, but now we're doing a number of particles spinning around in that same spiral. Let's run that example. And there's my uh, particles that have been created, and they're all going around in the orbit or container, oscillating back and forth just the way the single particle was. But now I'm controlling multiple particles. And you can send them anywhere you want to on the stage, because now their particles and particle systems, of course, are fantastic. So I love them, and we'll learn a lot more in them as we move to the particle section of the book. So let's do our last example here, and that's the Christmas tree example. I could not resist making a Christmas tree. So let's run this example. And really all this is, it's just a cone that I've stuck a bunch of spheres on. Now the spheres don't look like spheres because I brought their vertice level down until they look like uh, diamonds. So if you bring the vertice level of a sphere down to about two or three, it looks like a diamond, not a sphere. And I just stuck it on the vertices of a cone. Now you could do it with a sphere or any type of primitive because what Paper Vision does, it actually keeps a record of where the vertices are. Actually, Away3D does this as well. And so let's go down to an example. And so this uh, in this... So in this geometry uh, class, there's a vertices class, and I get the length, and I just iterate all over all the different vertices of my uh, outer lights. And my outer lights is the outer uh, cone that I created. So I'm just taking all these small spheres, and I'm pasting them all over the, the vertices of this cone. And it's a very useful technique for uh, putting things on the stage in certain positions just by putting the primitive where you want it to go and then throwing the objects on top of it. So that's the Christmas tree example. So let's take a look at the Display Object 3D class because that's where we're going to be going in Chapter 3. We're going to spend a lot of time discussing that and totally understanding that, totally understanding the, the matrix algebra and actually updating and building, uh, extending that class. So uh, where it's at is actually in uh, Paper Vision Objects Display Objects. So you can go down to your class here, go to Paper Vision 3D, go to Objects, and go to Display Object and click on that. And you can see that all these methods in here, but all these methods have their roots in one very important method, and that is the matrix 3D. So what I want to do, so you have rotation, you have position, you have stretching, but all that in a sense are functions of the matrix 3D. So let's find matrix 3D. I think I have it highlighted there somewhere. There we go. R control click on that. And there's your matrix 3D. Now this may look complicated, but I'm going to explain this entire class to you, and you'll be able to write your own class by the time this is over. So thanks for listening. Hey, let's take a look at that orbit one more time. And it's just super fun, and we're really moving into the exciting part. We're also going to be considering uh, Pixel Bender quite a bit in Chapter 3 as well, understanding how these primitives are built and how you lay materials on them, and just getting into the guts of what makes all this 3D stuff happen. So thanks for listening. This is Mike Lively, and I'll see you next time.